Thank you, choir. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Can I get a witness in the building? Can somebody type with me? Thank you, Lord, for blessing me. That's what I love to do. I love to thank God. Oh, God, for his many bountiful blessings. Happy Wednesday. It's good to greet you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our King. Welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 544 Government Street. I talked to you Sunday uh, 
from the subject of God will provide the provision for the vision. God is going to do that. God will provide, Robin Clark, the provision, that's right, for the vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Yes, yes, yes. Vision gives us direction. And when it's God's vision for us, it always comes with his provision. God, he has a specific plan or vision for each of us. The Bible says, for I know the plans I have for you, <laughs> declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. Oh God, I love the scripture. Thank you, Lord, for, for blessing me. Lord, you know what I need for my future. My plan needs to become God's plan. That's why the Bible in Psalms 37 helps us. It says that God will give you the desires of your heart if you delight yourself in him. He, he said he, he's not going to think about it. He says he's going to give it to you. And, and I like to put a caveat on this, that God gives us the desires of our heart when our desires especially become his desires. Those dreams, those plans, those visions, those insights that you have sometime, God have given them to you, Doris Dickinson. God does this behind the scene, and he puts a creative mold on the inside. These plans were determined before the foundation of the world, according to Ephesians 1. And what he plans, he accomplishes for his work in us, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Philippians 2.13. Uh, he will always accomplish according to the good pleasure of his will. <sighs> he worked in us to will and do for his good pleasure. It's all about his pleasure, his good pleasure rather. God's provision for us today is sufficient to sustain us, oh God, for whatever we come in contact with. For God is fully aware of everything that I will experience. Can somebody type with me, God is aware, Ursula Turner. God is aware. God will provide for our needs Today, tomorrow, and he's going to do it at the exact moment we need him. Not a moment early and not a moment late. We don't have anything to worry about. Why? There is a provision for the vision. Some of us have stopped dreaming. It, it, it's when you step out. When we step out uh, with a vision to accomplish something that the resources are given to us. That's, that's one way. But vision always attracts provision. You, you see, vision always attracts provision. It, it, it's like a magnet that it pulls us in exactly what we need to be successful. My God from Zion. Vision always attracts. Do you have your magnet with you on today? <laughs> yes, yeah, some of us need to get our magnet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's called the Holy Spirit. We need to, because we need the Holy Spirit to lead God and direct us. When we have a vision for our lives, we begin to draw necessary components that God gives us to accomplish the vision. We don't have to worry if we can accomplish it or not, if we're in, inside the vision. If your magnet is being used, your, your magnetic a power to pull on the Holy Spirit. Uh, when we when we draw the Holy Spirit in, God says, that's my child operating in a vision. That's why the Bible clearly states that no weapon formed against us shall prosper because God says, I control both sides, you and anything that oppose you because you're pulling on to the magnet. <laughs> Oh God, I'm pulling on to the magnet that will allow the Holy Spirit to lead God and direct me. Some people let go of the magnet too soon. And I'm just using that as a metaphor. Uh, we let go of the Holy Spirit. We let all the other spirits come in and the Holy Spirit don't have anywhere to rest. The Holy Spirit wants to take a seat in our lives. 
A creative vision is not always crazy. It may seem crazy to some people, but guess what? God oftentimes gives us a crazy looking vision. Oh God, because it could be, very well could be a part of divine destiny. Uh, oh God, a creative vision. It's not always crazy. The Bible says when God gives us a vision, write the vision, Jamie Rooks, and make it plain up on tables that he, that, that run, may read it. They can be driving down I-10 or I-95, wherever you are in the country. They can be driving down uh, I-whatever, and they'll read your billboard. Why? <laughs> because you wrote the vision and you've made it plain. I know where I'm going says the Lord. Uh, it, the Lord says, it, you know where you're going when you have put it on paper. I'm telling you, those that have not written a vision, you need to write the vision. I'm gotta, I have to pull on this magnet. Let me, let me get into the word on today um, because there, I have a lot of ground to cover. Uh, 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, verses 32 through 49. I won't read all of them to you today, uh, but the, I, I will explain the story. Most of us know when this, uh, when David came in contact with Goliath. Um, First Samuel chapter 17, I'll name the verses as I read them. You can follow me uh, starting at verse 32. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine and said oh God I, I, you have to hear this and Saul said to David thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him for thou art but a boy you're just a youth and he is a man of war from his youth and David said to Saul thy servant keep his father's sheep and there came a lion and a bear can somebody type that with me? A lion and a bear. And took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. But watch this. And this uncircumcised fell, uh, uh, person, giant, Philistine, shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. Oh God, let me, let me go down. I want to get to, to my, uh, where I want to land today. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained himself, for he was but a youth of ruddy and fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, uh, verse 43, Am I a dog that you come against me uh, with staffs? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Hmm. He cursed him, Joyce Pearlie. And, and verse 44 says, And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh to the fowls of the air and uh, to the beast of the field. Then David said unto the Philistine, You see, they're talking trash. Uh, thou comest to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a shield, but I come in the name of the Lord of hosts. <laughs> Can somebody type that with me real quick? I come in the name of the Lord, mm -hmm. the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. David didn't say, I'm going to take you out. He said, no, the Lord is going to do this. And I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. And I will give the caucuses of the, the host of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. My God from Zion. You, you see, I, I, I'm going to stop there. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'll get into the slingshot and all that stuff later. I told you two weeks ago that David was anointed to be king, to take Saul's place, uh, to be king over Israel. Saul don't know it yet, 
But you may recall that Jesse, David's father, brought forth his elder sons to be king. And our text on today, the three elder sons of Jesse, um, they was going out to battle against this Philistine. That's, that's the part I didn't read. And David went to bring them lunch. And, and as he went to bring them lunch, he got caught up in the story. <laughs> you know, the story of David and Goliath is a story about a little man who faces a giant. You see, in verse 23, and David heard him. David heard Goliath, a champion, a Philistine, a giant of a man. He stood nearly 10 feet tall. Mm. I don't know how much he weighed, but a coat of mail, the upper armor that he wore, weighed 125 pounds. My God. By itself. And the head of his spear weighed 15 pounds. He's talking trash to the Israelites. He's challenging their identity and their well-being. He's threatening to dominate. If he can, he's going to eliminate them. But David heard more than just Goliath's word. Saul and the Israelites' army heard the same word, and they were dismayed and they were afraid, according to the, uh, verse 11. But what did David hear that what caused him to say, let no one's heart fail? In verse 32, what was it that caused David to stand up against Goliath? Maybe David was listening with the ears of his heart. Point number one. I want to tell you today, point number one, trust God's power. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Some people will hear the enemy echoing louder than what it should be. Mm -hmm. Has someone ever said something to you and it just echoed louder than it should? Let, let me give you an example. If someone was to tell you you're a worthless piece of trash and it just keep echoing in your mind, but you know that you're not, that you know that you're God's and that you're wonderfully made, uh, and you despise what they've said about you, but uh, you see, some people will hear that's right, uh, Marilyn Jr., trust God's power. Some people will hear the negative and never put God's word on top of the negative. When you trust God's power, I submit to you today to put God's word on top of what you hear. Oh God, can you type that with me, please, somebody? I will put God's word on top of what I hear. You, you see, first of all, you conquer uh, by faith when you trust God's power. Remember, uh, Goliath was bigger and stronger than anyone in uh, Israel's army. The enemy is bigger and stronger than you. I told you Sunday, but God never told you to compare your enemy's size against him. He says, because besides me, there is no enemy. But God is bigger and stronger than your enemy. So trust God's power. That's right. Trust God's power. I'm going to put God's word on what I hear. Mm -hmm. It can be negative. It, it, it can be um, disrespectful. But I we need to put God's word on what we hear. Trusting God's power means that we don't worry about our size, our weakness. You, you're going to have to deal with me on this. David said to Saul, let no one, this is David talking. He put, oh God, he put God's word on what he heard. He said to Saul, let no one lose heart on the account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. He, what he's talking about is in the physical, but what I'm talking about of Saul is in the spiritual because nobody is going to call my God out. Saul, Saul said, uh, come on, David. You're not, you're just a boy. You can't go and fight him. You're a boy from childhood and he's been fighting from, he's a man fighting from his youth. So David comes to Saul and volunteers to fight Goliath. You're just a boy. You can't do this. I 
don't care what people tell you, we have to put God's word on what we hear. Saul looks at David and points out his weaknesses. I don't care if they're pointing out your weaknesses or not. David is young, yes, uh, too young to even join Saul's army. Only thing David was good for to Jesse was to bring his brother some lunch. David to Saul is inexperienced. He lacked training. He had never been in combat like this before. And Goliath have all the training and the power. But David does not let that detour him. David is the one that, that encourages Saul in the situation. Don't lose, don't any of us lose heart on the account of this Philistine. Oh God, oh God, oh God. You see, when you're trusting God's power, you don't have to worry about your weakness. Can I get a witness? Uh, as God says in the in, uh, uh, Second Corinthians, I think it's 12 and 9, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Oh God, my grace is sufficient for you. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if it's sickness. I don't care what it, if it's a disease. God says my power is made perfect in weakness. It's like this. Whatever you're looking at in life, it can be something really big. It does not compare against your God. God's faithful to everything that we do. You see, we can learn from David to remember God's faithfulness in the past. David says to Saul, your servant have been keeping um, his father's sheep. In other words, David's saying, I, I've been I, the lion and the bear. I killed both of them <laughs> and, and took and took the lamb out of their mouth. I, I did that with, with the help of the good Lord. When it turned on me, I seized it by the hair and struck and killed it. Your servant had both killed the lion and the bear. Watch this. This uncircumcised Philistine will not be able to defeat me either because he defies Israel. He defies our God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand, the paw of the Philistine. Samuel said to David, huh, go and the Lord be with you. David is not worried about his weakness because he remembers God's faithfulness in the past. I stopped by to let you know on today. <laughs> Remember that God had been faithful in the past. <laughs> David knows that he could not have defeated the lion and the bear on his own. It's God that did it. <laughs> Can somebody type with me and just say God did it? <laughs> That's right. And God will do the same to this uncircumcised Philistine who has defiled the armies of the living God. <laughs> David, uh, he, he actually sounds... Crazy on one side. I told you that sometimes the vision is, the, is in divine destiny. David sounds sound kind of crazy on one side. He says, the Lord have delivered me from the bear and the lion. And on the other side, it sounds pretty good. It's a statement of faith. In the present, based on God's faithfulness in the past. He says, if God did it for me then, I know he can do it for me now. The Lord who delivered me in the past will deliver me right now. Can I get a witness? In my present situation. By looking back, and, 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 and sometimes we just have to look back over our lives and think things over. Oh God, oh God, I'm, I'm getting a little warm in here. David is able to look forward in faith. A part of trusting God's power is, is the present in remembering God's faithfulness in the past. When the Israelites were getting ready to enter the promised land, what did Moses tell them? He told them to remember Egypt in Deuteronomy 7. You, you may say to yourself, this nation is stronger. Uh, how can we drive them out? But do not be afraid of them. Remember that your Lord, your God is on your side. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Yes, Lord, God did it then and he'll do it now. I want you to type it with me on today. God did it then and he'll do it now. He'll do it, uh, Sybil Jones Banks. He'll do it for your daughter. It's whatever you're facing bigger than you are right now. Trust God's power. Don't worry about the weakness. Don't worry about what the enemy looks like. Just remember what God did in the past. And David's faith was so strong that he convinced Saul. And Saul told, told David, go ahead. And the Lord be with you. Even Saul is showing a little faith here. Uh, not enough to fight Goliath, but enough to let David go and fight. Uh, remember, there is more on the line here than just David's life. It, it, whoever loses the fight, the people become slaves to the nation. Saul is entrusting the fate of his entire army, his soldiers. Oh, he put it all on David's shoulders. So that's the first thing we learn about conquering by faith today. Is if you want to conquer by faith, instead of being paralyzed by fear, you need to trust God's power. And I want you to type it with me just as bold as you can. I will trust God's power. I will trust God's power. Oh, God. The second thing, my second point this evening is... Use God's weaponry. God did it. Then he'll do it again. Use God's weaponry. Every fight involves some type of weapon. Even in the first fight using your fists. The battle, <laughs> I mean, you, you see, sometimes you have to use your mind. Your mind is a weapon. I refuse to have a battle uh, of the mind and go to the battle unarmed. You have to think sometime. Every fight involves some type of weaponry. Conquering by faith means that you use God's weaponry. Don't use the weapons of this world. If you're going to use the weapons of the world, it means that you will walk out there like Saul did. But if you're going to use the weapons of God, you're going to use God's words. <laughs> oh, God. And David does just that. Then Saul dressed David, according to the scripture, in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. Oh, God. David fastened on the sword and the tunic and tried to walk around. You can't use that. David says, I can't wear this. Oh, God. He said to Saul, because I'm not used to it, I can't fight in it. If someone try to give you a way out other than what God has allowed you to use in the past, sometimes you have to reject it. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the new and improved. Well, you keep the new and improved. Let me go from the old school and get on my knees and, and apply what, what I know to work. The Bible declares that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I don't have to go to what you're using. I need to use what, have, what I've been successful with with God all of my life. So he took it off. Oh, God. Type it with me. Take it off. That's right. That's right. If it's not fitting the way that God can receive glory, take it off. And he took his staff in his hand. I love this. He chose five smooth stones from the stream. He put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag with his sling in his hand. And he went to fight. He went running toward the Philistine. You see, I, I, I see this because Saul's Dressing David in his own armor and young David stumbling around, you know, is clearly too big for him. <laughs> you, you know, I can't fight with this. This is, uh, I can't use what you've given me. David had the courage to tell Saul, I cannot go in this. Mm -mm. No, I have to take it off. But let me go with what I know. Let me go from what I know. It's what we used to say in the old days. I'm going to go to the stream. I'm going to get five smooth stones. Mm. David couldn't use Saul weapons. <laughs> and in the same way, the Bible tells us, do not use the weapons of the world. Well, where did you read that, Reverend? 2 Corinthians 10. For though we live in the world, we do not wage 
war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the other hand, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Yes, Lord. What is the weapons of the world? Violence, intimidation, Russia, mm -hmm. uh, it, manipulation, deceit. As Christians, we don't use these type of weapons. We use God's weapons. We, use, we put some prayer on it. Can somebody type it with me? Put some prayer on it. Uh, we use the word of God. We use faith. We use truth. We use mercy. We, we use love. We use joy. We, we use compassion. It doesn't make sense to the world, but it makes sense to God. And that's all that matters. That's Therefore, the Bible tells us, put on the full armor of God. <laughs> One of my favorite scriptures. As Christians, because it talks about spiritual warfare. He says, the devil is going to come with forces against you. He says, but what I want you to do, I want you to put the war, the battle in the heavenlies. He says, well, for we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. But he talks about principalities. Where, where does principalities live? They live in the heavenlies. That's, that's where our real fight is. In the mind and in the heavens. Uh, oh God. And we have to take our minds to the heavens. When you dress for success and not to impress and Goliath <laughs> was not very impressed with David God says this is what I like this is what I like and David uh, looked uh, over and he and, and, and Goliath saw that David was but a boy he said to David am I a dog hmm. am I a dog that you come at me with sticks and the Philistine cursed David by his gods come here he said I'll give your flesh to the birds. And David said, oh no, I'm not going to let you out trash talk me and talk about my God. David said, no, this day you're going to, you're going to, your head going to be cut off. Now this is the third person who tries to discourage David from fighting Goliath. David, uh, all the brothers, all three of them, they was in war. They was, they was no, David, don't go. I know people going to tell you, no, that's too much for you, sir. You're not big enough. Look how puny you are. They told Saul that he was. They told uh, Saul told him you're too young. Goliath cursed him to his face. But once again, David is not dissuaded. Uh uh. And neither should we be. Mm -mm. We need to be prepared for battle. We need to put on the full armor of God. So what is the armor of God? Stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. With the breastplate of righteousness, mm -hmm. put, put your don't let your feet take you nowhere that you're not gonna invite God. The Bible says, let your feet uh, be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition, take the shield of faith. You better have it. With that, you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the enemy. Because when he throws them out, like he allowed Goliath to do, to talk trash, he says, they shall not burn you up. They're not going to put fear in your heart. And he says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. How do you prepare for spiritual battle? Seven things. The truth, righteousness, the gospel of peace, faith, salvation, the word of God, and prayer. Seven things you need for a spiritual battle, for a spiritual warfare. Uh, truth, righteousness, gospel of peace, faith, salvation, the word of God, and prayer. This is God's armor. This is the armor. <laughs> this, this is not recognized by the world. But it's essential to winning our spiritual battles. David comes to Goliath. Goliath keep coming. They running toward each other. Oh God, Goliath's shield, a bearer goes before him. But you know what? The Lord went before David and it makes all the difference in the world. Remember, the battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. And the third part, when it comes to using God's weapons, you need to remember who is really fighting this battle? Oh God, the battle belongs to the Lord. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with the sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the mighty name of the, of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day, your head gonna be cut off. Today, 
I'll give the caucuses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth. And the whole world shall know that there is a God in Israel. My God from Zion. I love this young man's uh, uh, the tenacity. This is one of the greatest statements in, of faith in the entire Bible. Maybe even in the history of the world. These three verses are the heart and soul of, of the whole David and Goliath story. We see David's heart. That's why he was part of uh, uh, Jesus' lineage. This is where we fall in love with David, and so will all of Israel. David's zeal for God to honor him. Oh God, do you have a zeal to honor him on today? Do you have a zeal to honor God? If you're with me on today, I want you to type with me, I have a zeal to honor God. Z-E-A-L. I have a zeal. I have a compassion I, I to, to honor God. David is facing Goliath. And David is not intimidated. David does not have fear. Goliath comes against him with the sword. But he comes in the name of Almighty, Almighty, Almighty God. David is confident. Why? Because the battle is the Lord's. Oh God, let God get all the honor. I have a zeal. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh God, Henry Collins the third and Williams. I have a zeal. Let everyone know that it's not by the sword of the spear, but it's that the Lord is on the side of David. You know, God is doing mighty and great things. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle, reaching into his bag while he's running. He's taken out a stone while he's running and he slug it and struck the Philistine on the forehead right there. The stone, the, uh, stone sank in his forehead and he gave and, and he fell face down to the ground. David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone without a sword in his hand. He struck down the Philistine and killed him. My God, my God. The battle it's over before it barely began. Oh God, this is a TKO uh, church family. This is a knockout in the first round. It's the very first punch. David triumphs over Goliath without a sword in his hand. Trusting God's power and using God's weaponry, David overcomes the Philistine with just one sling and a stone. Oh God, oh God, one, one stone in the hand of the faithful ha, is more than a Philistine full of armor, physical armor. That's what the Lord said. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged because of the vast army. For the battle is not yours, but it belongs to the Lord. Oh God, you can apply this situation into your life. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Whatever you're facing this evening, for the battle it's not yours. It belongs to the Lord. So use God's weapon. Don't use, my God from Zion, the weapons of the world. Put on the whole armor of God. Remember, the battle belongs to the Lord. Third point, and I'm out of here. The Bible says, rest in God's victory. Verses 51 through 58. How do you conquer by faith? Instead of being paralyzed by fear, trust God's power. Use God's weaponry. Now, now we're going to have to rest in the victory. You said, well, do I need some rest? Faith is the victory uh, that overcomes the world. Uh, you know, now David ran and stood over him. And he took hold of the Philistine sword and drew it from his, his body. After he killed him, he cut off his head with his own sword. When the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. Yes, they did. Look who's running now. First they was talking trash. We got the biggest man. We can defeat anybody. But when David killed Goliath and took his own sword and cut his head off, the Bible says that the Philistines turned and ran. 
And the men, that's, that's verse 51 and 52. And then the men of Israel and Judah surged forward with a shout and pursued the Philistines to, to the entrance of Gath and to the gate of Ekron. Oh God, can you imagine what, they, what just happened? David killed the most powerful Philistine in the world, the biggest man on both sides of the battle. God says, do not mess with my anointed. Don't do my anointed no harm. Now cutting off Goliath's head, this is a gruesome detail. You might even wonder, why is it even in the Bible? Then it was, an ex you see, it, it, it was, back in that day, it was like a trophy. When Saul dies at the end of 1 Samuel, the Philistines will cut off his head too. It's like um, a movie you would see on TV. I don't think God was pleased with this custom, but I think that they used it to scare the enemies for years to come. Oh God. God will always provide the provision for the vision. Can somebody type that with me? God will always provide the provision for the vision. It doesn't matter how big your enemy is, Cam. It does not matter what it looks like. What matters is that we know that behind the scene, God is working it for our good. God is working the provision for the vision. Oh God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can somebody tell him thank you? You see, 1 John um, 4, uh, 5, uh, chapter 5, verse 4 says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that have overcome the world, even our faith. If you want to conquer by faith, you need to rest in God's victory by faith. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Now you better be ready. Be ready to, to um, testify of the goodness of God. Because God will always provide the provision for the vision. You don't even know what you're involved in. David didn't know he was going to battle that day. David thought he was just bringing some lunch. He was bringing a bushel. But the bushel turned into a blessing. Draw nigh unto God and he'll draw nigh unto you. God will always provide the provision for the vision. God will give you a vision in the midst of in the midst of your battle. That's exactly what he did. He gave David a vision in the midst of the battle and says this <laughs> this battle is not about me and this Philistine. It's about the Lord because he's talked against my God and God will not allow this to happen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We're all in the same boat. We need each other. God is taking us to a new level. He's provided the provision for the vision. If we can stay on course and give our situation over to the Lord, the Lord says, I can use what you bring to me. You may be bringing lunch, ha! but God says, I'm, I'm setting you up for a battle right now in the mighty name of God. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord Jesus in the pardon of your sins, send a man, send a woman, send a boy, send a girl. If you need to give yourself back to God on today, the doors of the church are not open. Come to God just as you are. Come to God just as you are. We pray for your lost loved ones right now. We pray that God will do the miraculous, that God will put his super on that natural. The Bible declares, for if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. My God from Zion, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If that's you, inbox me, let me know. Let me know that you want to be saved. Secondly, if, if you need a church home, you need to run to this altar right now uh, via, uh, oh God, social media. Run to this altar because God, if you want to become a member of this church and we can grow together and you can be nurtured with us as we grow to, towards Zion. If that's you on today, inbox me, let me know. You can put it on the screen. 
Thirdly, if you're a backslider, you said, well, um, God, I, I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven, but I need that joy restored. If that's you on today, God will give you the desires of your heart. He will restore the joy in the mighty name of Jesus. God will always provide the provision for the vision. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, the Bible says that he's married to the backslider. So the doors of the church are open. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we touch and agree, God. Believe in you, God, for our unsaved loved ones, those that need to come to God, to Jesus, to Christ today. We pray, we bind every hindering spirit, oh God, that will come against them. We pray, God, that they will make a decision and make it now. Oh God that they will not play with their souls in the mighty name of Jesus. Secondly, God, those that, that are leaning toward becoming members of this, this flock, of this as we embark on our journey toward heaven, we pray, God, that you release them now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thirdly, the backslider, God, we pray that you move by your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, God, for those that's that, that's facing COVID, oh God, that, that still, oh God, have the remnant of, of, of this uh, COVID-19. We pray, God, blessings upon their lives. We know you can do anything but fail. We pray, God, for those that have been suffering. We pray, God, for uh, Brother Garden, oh, oh God, right now in the curry, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you continue to heal his body. We, we pray for J.J. Johnson, God. We pray that you continue to heal her body. We pray, oh God, for um, for Tammy's mother. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Miss Brown. We pray for her right now in the name of Jesus. We, we touch and agree, God, believing you can do anything but fail. We pray, God, that you move by your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 My life is not my own. To you, God, I belong. I give myself back to you. I give myself back to you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray. We touch and agree. Believing it's done. Amen. Amen. Aaron August. Amen. Faith. Henry, amen. Alvin Benoit, we thank you, Lord. We bless your name in the mighty name of Jesus. For those that are sowing seed on this evening, oh, oh God, I will always have because I'm going to always give. You know, I'm not saying that you have to give. I'm just saying that if God puts it in your spirit, somebody need to um, go ahead and um, cash app whatever amount. I don't tell you all the time what to give, but you can um, cash app to... Um, w, uh, Dollar sign, Wesley UMCBR. Wesley UMCBR. You can mail your check, 544 Government Street, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Or if you've been blessed by this message, you can do Cash App, 225 500 2023. Amen, amen, amen. Don't forget, we are also burning the mortgage. 75000 to go. We are doing it. We are on track to get rid of this thing, <laughs> this mortgage. Yes, yes, yes. Watch what God does next. Because after we pay this mortgage off, we will build a new facility in the mighty name of Jesus. God is doing, putting his super on our natural for those that want to join me and paying this off any amount. It will go exactly where you desire. Shall we pray? Spirit of the living God, thank you for giving us the gifts to be able to give back to you. Now we pray, God, some 30, 60, 100 fold return right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh God, Deuteronomy 28. <laughs> oh God, oh God, you, you better read it. I, I told you two years in a row. Deuteronomy 28, that's what we're living under. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for joining us. All hearts and minds are clear. Amen. We're godly proud of our youth. They're doing great work. Oh God. If your youth uh, want to be a part of our worship experience, call me, text me, email me, let me know so we can put them on the program in the mighty name of Jesus. Any first time visitors with us on this evening? Seeing none, let the church say amen. The whole church say amen. Join me Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Central Time. Oh, it's going down this Sunday. How's it going down, Reverend? Like four flat tires and a spare five. The number of grace. Ali R. Sweet Wine is in the building. Amen. Ursula Turner. Amen. I heard um, Walter talk to you or your mom today. Amen. Amen. Uh, Mary Samuel is in the building three times. Amen. 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 Doris Dickerson is in the house. Yes. Cheryl Ricard is in the building. Yes. Doris. Enos Lewis is in the building. Jolene. 
Taylor Benoit in the building. Good to see you, woman of God. Sybil, where you been? Good to see you, woman of God. Tell Sean, I know she's doing better because God have done put his super on her natural. Mary of January, good to see you, woman of God. Thank you for your kind words. And Williams, birthday girl, happy birthday. Peace and blessings to you. Yes, yes, yes. Let the whole church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. Amen. Thanks. Yes, yes. It's your sister's birthday. I see you, Miss Robinson. Is it in the building? Yes. I think it was yesterday. God bless you, woman of God. I'll see you Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Central Time. Reverend Brooks, Minister Brooks is in the building. Good to see you, woman of God. I need to call you right afterwards. Reverend Marilyn, I didn't see you in the, you must have been sitting in the back. Good to see you. Peace and blessings to you, woman of God. Y'all stay tuned. Reverend Marilyn is going to be preaching one day. Sometime soon, uh, next month or two or three, somewhere down the road. Amen. I look forward to it. God has spoken. Let the whole church say amen. Peace and blessed. Rose Bill, I see you. I see you just snuck in the back. Yes, uh-huh, uh-huh. Where's Cherie? Tell Cherie get in church. She hanging out in the office. <laughs> We're going to the parking lot. Thank you, Lord, for your many bountiful blessings. Watch over, guide us, and protect us. Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. See you Sunday.